So a few years ago, I was able to help these awesome people land jobs at firms like PricewaterhouseCoopers, Ernest & Young, Deloitte, KPMG, Lexicon, and so forth. And before this, I was also receiving job offers from places like Wink, Drag Internationals, and Topshop with zero experience in that industry. And that's why today, I'm quite confident in the interview tips that I will be sharing with you that I believe could help you thrive whether you have very little to no experience in that industry. Let's get started. So the killer framework that I came up with consists of four steps, and that is one, answer the question, two, share your story, three, share your wins, and four, link back to the company. If you are able to do these four things properly, then you won't have to worry about memorizing your script and you can speak naturally to your hiring manager. For example, let's just say I was applying for a job at Topshop and I had no experience selling clothes. This was a true story back when I was in my early 20s. And let me demonstrate an example with you of how I used this framework for myself. Let's just say my interviewer's name is Taras and Taras asked me, Patty, why should we hire you? And at the time, this was how I answered that question. Thank you, Taras, for this question. I was waiting for you to ask me this one. Now, the reason why I would be the perfect candidate for this position is because I've always been passionate about delivering exceptional experiences to my customers. Back in my family's business, we'd always make it a top priority to know who our customers are and what they like to order. For example, we'd have this customer named Anne who would always order patsyu vegetables, but with only green vegetables. When we took note of this, we are able to make Anne feel like our restaurant is her go-to place for a Tuesday dinner, and that in turn increases customer retention and long-term profit. This is something that I would like to bring for Topshop because when our customers feel like Topshop is their go-to store for feeling confident and empowered, they will always come back to us and this will in turn increase Topshop's long-term profitability and also increase traction as well. Now what makes this answer more different? The reason being is because people don't care about your special skill sets as much as how your special skill sets could benefit their long-term growth. And I was able to clearly highlight that as long as you highlight me, I will bring you the profit and the customer retention or the traction that you want because I've proven to have done this in my previous work experience. Now I'm going to touch up with you on a corporate style interview where my clients use this to land jobs at top tier accounting firms. Okay, so another question that seemed challenging for a lot of people was how do you deal with team conflict? So the answer went something along the lines of this. Back in my internship at X company, we had a major problem with submitting work by the deadline as everybody's schedules were not aligned to each other. But instead of causing team conflicts by calling people out straightforwardly, I would try to empathize with them and talk to them one-on-one -on, -one on what support they needed during that time. As a result of our team members feeling supported, feeling heard and understood, they started to step up more and really prioritize getting their part of the work done right. As a result, we were able to then meet our clients' expectations and really excel in the end. I believe that empathizing with my team members is a valuable skill set that I can bring to Deloitte because I understand that in every work environment, we will always have these conflicts occur. But what matters the most is how we solve it. And I'm confident in my ability to be that team player here. So the one thing I really like to emphasize is that even though you may be an engineer, a software developer, an accountant, or doing a task where you don't need to interact with people, but at the end of the day, people make money by interacting with people. Okay, some of your roles may be very technical and you don't have to deal with people. But in order for us to really deliver exceptional work to our clients, it's all about teamwork. It's about team building and actually communicating with each other. So as much as it's really important for you to have the technical skill set, but what's even more important is your ability to adapt to other human beings. And what employees are really looking for is your ability to get along with their team so that you can come in and really add value. So now that we've demonstrated two examples of very powerful answering methods, I would like to dive deep into the winning psychology you must adopt in order to be confident when speaking to your interviewers. A few years ago, I had this exceptional client named Manisha and Manisha found me through client testimonials. She had an interview with Ernest and Young literally the next day and she was like, Patty, we need to practice this tonight. So we scheduled that coaching call with her the night before and it was such a great experience for both of us. She was already great at answering 
answering questions, but what she needed was structure. So I asked Manisha, what are your interests? What do you like? What are your passions? And we somehow came to talk about pet stores. So I told Manisha, imagine that you were a pet store owner. You need a personal assistant to help you with some admin stuff because your business is growing so fast and you can't handle all the workload on your own. So we dug down into these questions. If you were going to hire her, what exactly do you need from her? Manisha says, I need her to know how to do her job, aka she needs to have relevant experience. But anything more than that, she says, I have to be able to get along with her as well. So not only do you require relevant experience, but you also need compatibility, the ability to build rapport with the team in that company. And so when she fully understood all of this, I said, okay, Manisha, let's take it back to the interview with EY. Let's figure out exactly what this interviewer wants from you by you pretending to be that person. Now on this coaching call, I said, I'm going to be you and you're going to be that hiring manager and you're going to interview me and tell me why you would actually hire me. It was such a fun conversation because Manisha is awesome on her own. So Manisha starts asking me these questions and I answered like I would be the perfect candidate for EY. The more she put herself in the shoe of the person who's hiring her, the more she understood exactly how to convey her answers. Therefore, it's not about memorizing the script and the four-step method framework is only there to guide you to be structured. But what you really need to understand is what is the pain point of your interviewer? Number one, they need to hire you because they need to share the workload to somebody else. There is too much work on their plate and they are stressed with their day. Therefore, if they hire you, they would want you to come in to make their day at work more pleasant. And number two, if they are a founder of a small to medium business or a startup, then they are looking to grow their business. They are looking towards a vision where their business is bringing in 10x profit, 10x growth. And this person that they're hiring is going to help them achieve that goal. So how can you present yourself in a way where I am the solution that you need to get to where you want to be. Okay, so I'm going to be really brutally honest here. If somebody who's working at a big corporation is hiring you, they don't care as much about the company's progression as much as when they're going to receive an opportunity to get paid more. Therefore, people who work in large corporations want to have an increased salary. They want an opportunity to get promoted. So if hiring you makes them the star employee of that company, they're going to want you to be in their team. Whereas with company founders or people that work in startup space, their goal is not just about self-interest and getting promoted, but they're passionate about where their company is going. So therefore, their pain point is a bit different to the people that hire you in big corporations. So now you know that in Manisha's case, her interviewer, whether she admits it or not, is in it for the promotion. She wants a salary increase. She wants a sense of progression for herself. But I guess some part of her also wants to mentor other people, or she wants to make a difference to the juniors' lives by sharing her wisdom and knowledge. Manisha is going to be that person who is going to make this particular individual feel like I'm about to make a difference. I'm about to become the positive impact in this company. I'm about to be the star employee. So how are you going to answer your question in a way where this person fully believes that you are the vehicle to help them become that star employee? So even though the job description says responsibility, accounts receivable, tax return, all this blah, 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 blah. Your actual responsibility is to help that person achieve their goals in their career by lightening their workload, by being a great communicator, by being a great listener, by being a sponge that can absorb all these skill sets. So while functional skill sets and previous experience is essential, but the most essential thing is your ability to sell a vision, your ability to meet people's needs, your ability to position yourself as the value adder, not just as a regular employee. So the result for Manisha was that I think a week or two later, she was confirmed to have received the position at EY. And I just thought it was so funny because she was such an awesome person. I loved her energy so much. And I told all of my clients who came onto my coaching call at the time, you all have inherent worth within you. When they first entered the call, they were a bit rigid. Some of them are great communicators like Manisha, but some of them are also introverted like myself. And the foundational problem amongst all of my clients were not exactly language barriers. It wasn't about lack of experience. It wasn't about anything else but their self-belief. People that came from China didn't believe that they were better than somebody who grew up here. They felt like their language was lacking. And I'll remind to them that it's not about your language. It's about your ability to connect to people, to really come in and add value. So I always try to empower people that you are special and you are good enough for any company. If they don't hire you, it's their loss. And I always remind them that. And when they're able to really see themselves as the value adder, not just as an employee who's looking for a paycheck, that's when something with 
within them switch and their whole aura would change. When we first start the coaching call, I would go with one question, please introduce yourself. And I would identify their problem from the very first answer. Once I identify the problem, instead of saying that, oh, your answer was too long, I just literally flip the switch and say, okay, you're going to be the person interviewing me. I'm going to be answering the exact way that you answered. And you tell me if you want to hire me or not. And if you don't want to hire me, let me demonstrate an answer to you where you most likely would hire me. And once people just understood this part, it's like something within them just changed. Their whole energy changes. Their eyes change. They light up. They feel excited to answer. And it's like magic. I freaking love these coaching calls so much. And the four step framework was just there to guide them. But the whole energy that they bring to the table is like, damn, I want to work with you. That's how they made me feel. And that's not because of some smart template or anything like that. It's about the energy you bring to the interview, the self-confidence, the magnetism. That is also a very crucial part of winning in the interview, especially if you want to win overnight like Manisha did. Okay, so now that I've rambled on about this, I want to give you a method that truly works beyond the framework method, and that is to rewire your subconscious mind. If your dream is to genuinely work at Ernest & Young or PricewaterhouseCoopers, you want to wire your subconscious mind to believe that you are chosen for that role. You are Ernest & Young star employee. You are PricewaterhouseCoopers leader. If that is your dream, if that is not your dream, you actually have to ask yourself, where do I truly want to go? And where do I genuinely want to work? In a lot of cases, your negative thoughts will say to you, it is a privilege to even have a dream of working at a job because we work to earn money. So therefore, we should just settle for anything that earns us money. But in my opinion, when I approach jobs from a place of, I just want the money. I don't care about your company. I don't care about your growth. I don't care about anything. I'm just going to answer my interview questions in a way where I will just get paid. From my personal experience, your interviewers are humans and they can sense that. They can sense when somebody just wants the job for the sake of earning money. So whatever job you apply for, I really need you to have that 50% passion, the genuine passion to want to work at this company. You need to have some sort of sincerity within you so that you don't come off as being fake and your answers are not overly polished. You want to answer the questions from a place of being genuine and wanting to genuinely be a part of that team. Even if you really want the job for the money, but at least a small part of you likes the company and a small part of you wants to actually add value to the company's team. So rewiring your subconscious will help you believe that you are here to add value. You are their golden solution. You are the top priority candidates. So for me personally, I listen to Dylan James affirmation tracks before bed in a drowsy state. And my favorite one is you are the best. Every night I would fall asleep thinking to myself, you always win at everything that you do. You are chosen. You are loved. You always succeed at everything that you do. You always upbeat yourself every day. You are capable of overcoming any challenges. Money is easy for you to manifest. You always prioritize yourself first. You are respected. You always respect yourself. And because I repeat these phrases, in my head right before I sleep. My day-to-day actions these days are really congruent to that belief system. And even right when I wake up, I will listen to Lavender's affirmation tracks and she will say things like, you are capable of manifesting your dream life. I am grateful for having my dream life today. You are beautiful exactly as you are. You accept yourself exactly as you are. I love every part of me. Every part of me is beautiful. And once these phrases are repeated in my mind, it makes me more attractive to people. And why I really stress this practice for you is because your interviewers are humans and humans are drawn to other humans and you want to attract your interviewer to want to hire you. So therefore, if you have the self-belief of I am chosen, I am prioritized, I am the star employee, I am the star candidate for this company, then the way you carry yourself will be full of confidence. You will radiate magnetism in that interview because you are not trying too hard from a place of I need a job to pay my bills. But it's more like, yeah, I need to pay my bills, but I also know that I am the one. So therefore, I'm not going to come off desperate. I'm going to come off like I know my worth. And if you don't know my worth, then that is your loss. So that's why when people are trying to memorize interview scripts, the best thing you can really do is to shift your subconscious belief first. And then you want to practice daily habits that make you feel like a diamond. And once you feel like a diamond, you come back and practice a bit of your interview scripts. And then you carry yourself with full confidence. You are the one that people choose. And therefore, you are receiving multiple job offers. Now, the other thing I want to stress to you is the importance of the ping pong game. The ping pong game means that if the interviewer asks you, hey, Patty, tell us about yourself. What is your background? You're not going to spend five minutes talking about your past experience and what you've won. The interviewer doesn't want a one-way conversation. People want to feel engaged. People want to feel like they have an input in that conversation as well. So as much as you need to sell yourself in the interview, it's really important that you give your interviewer the chance to also engage with you by asking them the right questions. So 
back when I became very arrogant and I didn't believe in anyone but myself. I didn't even bother preparing legitimate questions to ask my interviewers. I was just concerned about getting the job so I can get paid. But when I was really sincere about that company, when I believed in that company's vision, I would prepare every single thing from my mindset, interview questions, and how to make the interviewers feel engaged. And you want to come off from that place where how can I really deliver an exceptional experience for these people? How can I make these people's day better by making them feel like their voices matter and they are seen and heard at least by me? Some questions I really want you to consider is, so Taras, I saw that you transitioned from this big company to now this small startup. What was your thought process along this journey and what have you learned along the way? Anybody will have to take time to think before they answer that question. And that is how you get your interviewers engaged. And I want you to even think about questions like, if you were to hire me next week, what would a perfect day in your life here at work look like? I know this question seems exaggerating, but you want to see how your conversation flow and you want to ask questions like this where the person really has time to think about the answer before they answer you. That is how you spark the curiosity and the experience with you becomes unique rather than, oh, it was just a normal interview. And also another question that you may want to consider is, what are your favorite books to read? What would you recommend for me if I were to succeed in this role? The thing is, I was actually interviewed by this guy from a marketing agency and he asked me, what are your favorite books? At the time, I had no sincere interest for the company. I was only interested in my own career development. So I didn't even think about how that question was going to determine whether we are compatible or not. I answered the question with, I like spiritual books like Wayne Dyer or Abraham Hicks or Tao Te Ching. And that honestly didn't have much relevance to somebody that was growing their marketing agency. I also told him honestly that I read this book by Sabi Subri. It was a book called Sell Like Crazy. And I really, really enjoyed that book. And he told me that actually that guy is our competitor. So you want to make sure that you really prepare from a sincere place that if this person was a founder of a marketing agency, they probably like books like Atomic Habits by James Clear, something practical and something doable, not something spiritual like The Universe Has Your Back by Gabby Bernstein. So you want to also study your interviewers on what type of person they are. What was their previous career transition? What kind of articles do they like to engage in? What kind of personality type you think they are? And you can actually see this from LinkedIn. If this person seems like a spiritual person, then you can touch on the spiritual topics that you think will resonate with her in your interview. But if your interviewer seems like a practical person, a doer, a person that gets things done, then you want to talk about practical approaches to life. You may want to talk about things like productivity and growth mindset with them. So what I'm trying to say to you is that building basic rapport is really important. People want to feel like I'm working with somebody who is like me, somebody that I can really get along with, somebody that I share interests with. I've seen people make decisions based on their emotions. They have their emotional biases as to why they already like this person. Then they use their logical reasoning to justify why this person's resume is a good fit for the company's position. Most humans decide using their emotions. Therefore, you're going to adapt yourself so that you fit with their team culture and you also build the best impression in that interview. Okay, so in summary, in order for you to be the best candidate for any position, you want to place yourself as the solution to your interviewer's pain points. If your interviewer is working in a big company, their pain point is, I want to be the star employee in that company. I want my own career progression. I want to also be a mentor for these young people, but I want to also grow in this company, earn more money, have more prestige, have better, higher status, and you will position yourself as the person who can help them get exactly what they want out of their career by bringing your experience and tangible skill sets, but most importantly, your ability to adapt to the team culture and really bring true value. If your interviewer is a company founder or works in a startup space, their goal is a bit different. They may still want higher status. They still may want growth and profitability, but I guess their concerns is more revolved around I want to build true legacy with this company. I don't care about the money as much as creating impact. I want to bring value to my customers. I want to grow my customer's base. I want my customers to receive the best experience from our solution. I want our customers to receive the best experiences from working with us. Therefore, you're going to position yourself as the person who will bring in that best customer experience, who will help them create the impact they want to create, build the legacy, whatever they want. You're going to position yourself as the person who will help them achieve those goals. And you can do this by using the key four-step framework to really structure your answers and also rewire your subconscious mind to believe that you are that star employee. You are the chosen one. You are the person that's the best fit for this role. You are worth the salary raise. You are worth everything that you want to achieve. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please let us know if this video actually helped you with your job interview process. So leave your comments down below and let me know how you go. If you like my videos, then please feel free to subscribe and also let us know what you want to see next. I'm so excited to keep growing 
going on this journey with you. And again, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.